To touch on trajectory processing a little bit more and help you understand exactly what we're doing here. Essentially, uh, we're trying to find out where the LiDAR sensor was in 3D space at all times throughout the flight. So what we're using is the raw GNSS data and raw IMU data from the payload and marrying it with a base station of some sort. Um, this is called trajectory processing. Uh, it's used for both the LiDAR and the photogrammetric solutions. You know, with LiDAR, we're creating a, uh, an SBET or a trajectory of what that sensor was doing at all times in 3D space at a very precise interval. Um, on the photogrammetric side, we're doing the same thing, but we're really just worrying about the trigger events and where each event happened. Um, so we produce an EO file or an exterior orientation file uh, that you can then bring into your photogrammetric software and build your orthomosaics. And with the LiDAR step, then this would be followed by the georeferencing of that trajectory. So you'll take the trajectory side of things and then produce uh, your LAS point cloud in the next step or the next module, which is our georeferencing module. So when you hop into our MD Infinity Cloud, you know, this is the, what you're looking at here is your login page. Um, so first what we'll do is we'll log in. Uh, upon entering our MD Infinity Cloud, you're, you can see a couple different tools. Uh, we're all right here on the project dashboard. Um, so when you have multiple different things processing, you will see, you know, your trajectory, your georeferencing, all the different modules that you have open and how, what's going on with them. Um, I want to be clear, you know, with, with our products and our micro drones as a service, you are still processing your data. Uh, be it on, on the cloud or on our desktop version of this software as well. Um, for trajectory processing, um, there's a couple different things that you have set under this tab. You know, you have your trajectory processing tab uh, where you can do the basic processing, but you also have a base stations tab. Um, say you have a project uh, like a quarry, for instance, and you want to save a base station, you always set your base station up over the same location. You're going to go fly that project multiple times a month or multiple times a year. Um, you can save that location and and always use that specific coordinate uh, for when you base station set up and not have to manually input it. Uh, so it's a neat little uh, tool that we just uh, implemented into our MD Infinity Cloud. So for trajectory processing, uh, to start a new project, you simply click on the Add Processing task here. We're going to name this uh, MD Infinity, oops, I can't spell, Demo. And we're going to select the payload that we're using, in this case, the MD LiDAR 1000. And we're going to use direct georeferencing for our processing mode. To move to the next step, we can simply drag and drop our, our raw trajectory file. So each one of our systems is using uh, the Aplanix IMUs. Uh, so you're going to have a T04 built in from the LiDAR payload that will drag and drop into the GNSS IMU file. Next, if we want to uh, get an exterior orientation from the onboard camera, so we can run through that and build um, our uh, colorized point cloud or an ortho mosaic from that, from that camera, we would simply grab the folder that we use uh, for this project. We're not gonna upload all the images, but just the folder so we can grab the image names. Uh, from here, once everything's uploaded, click on next step. And this is where we'll input our base station info. Uh, for this project, um, we did have a localized base station. So I would tell it, yes, I do. But let's say I didn't. We can actually use um, the different things that uh, MD Infinity has to offer. Uh, be that the Trimble PPRTX or the Atlantic Smart Base. So if we wanted to select one of these, we would just select and click Next Step, or this one, click Next Step. But in this case, we are going to use um, a base station, and we can either import that coordinate manually, or we can let it post-process through Trimble RTX. So we'll let that happen and let them give us a corrected coordinate, and we will then grab our Rhinox file and upload it. Once it's finished uploading, uh, we'll go to the next step. And here we will actually uh, select our output uh, for our trajectory file as well as our EO file, our exterior orientation for our imagery. From there, um, if we're going to leave our trajectory in the in the default coordinate system, um, but if we do want to export out our photogrammetric data in a certain coordinate system, we would select that here. Uh, so in this case, we can come in here and select US foot. Uh, we're going to use the decimal degrees and we're going to say, Hey, we want a Natty 3 2011 uh, state plane, uh, Natty, Natty 3 state plane. Uh, let's get it. This was flown in uh, Louisiana South. Uh, and then we can use orthometric and send it in geoid 12B. Um, so from there, uh, everything looks good. It's going to give us a quick summary before we hit process. It's going to let us know which coordinate system our trajectory is in, which coordinate system our exterior orientation for our photogrammetric data is in. Uh, we click accept 
and say yes, accept, and then we can process that data. And this will take about five or five minutes or so, and they'll shoot you a note and say, hey, your SBET is finished processing. Uh, would you like to download? Or you can go right into the georeferencing uh, module and do your LiDAR georeferencing right here on the cloud or in our desktop software.